Phoenix of Ash is hello good game. And we've just went three in a row. Hey everybody, welcome back and thanks so much for taking the time out of your day to watch Hello Good Game. Today, we have a video you're either going to love or you're going to hate. This is a zero rare, zero mythic, free to play, beginner friendly, Demir Rogues build. Demir consists of black and blue together as a color combination and Rogues is our, um, you know, creature archetype or sub archetype if you will. Um, the deck is absolutely insane. It's getting consistent wins within Mythic, just tearing up people, you know, even beating the upgraded version of Demir Rogues, which is really fun. And uh, typically we would recommend new players grab the cycling deck because of the uh, power level so high for, you know, what's included in the deck, all of the commons and uncommons, right? So you're not spending your rare or Mythic wild cards to build the deck and you're still being able to climb rank into Mythic with this, uh, with the cycling deck. You're also able to do that with this deck. Uh, and I think the second version of our free to play rogues here today, because it is the second time we've showcased it, is absolutely perfect. And it might be, and I think is better than the free to play cycling deck, which typically uh, held king or held the crown above all. Uh, it was very, very good. So we're gonna break down the deck. Let's do a deep dive so you understand the strategies, the synergies, you know, all the cards, why they were chosen to be included. Uh, you know, everything all about that, even the general land shenanigans. So uh, if you don't find interest in any of that, you already know how to play Demir Rogues perfectly. You can just jump into the chapter section below and get right into the gameplay. I encourage everybody watching to subscribe to the channel and like the video. You can even share the channel to some of your friends, whether that be word of mouth or a link. Uh, all variants of that happen. I guess it's probably should be with a link right now, considering uh, most places are in lockdown. With that being said, though, I'm not here to judge. Let's break down free to play rogues 2.0 of course four copies of the mirfolk wind robber this is a 1-1 with flying it's a rogue whenever it deals combat damage to a player that player mills a card you can sacrifice the robber to draw a card activating it only if your opponent controls eight or more cards in their graveyard we can do this at instant speed which is quite nice so uh because it's at instant speed we can interrupt some of the adventure spells if a bone crusher giant tries to hit it we can take the target away from them and then the giant just goes straight to the grave which is quite nice Four copies of the Arun Crab, uh, you know, probably the most hated card in Magic the Gathering Arena right now. 0-3 with Landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent mills three cards. <sighs> Four copies of Blood Chief's Thirst. You know, this is the best removal in Arena right now, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it might not be the strongest, but, you know, it certainly is consistent. For one, destroy target creature or planeswalker with converted mana cost two or less. And you can kick it for a total of four to destroy any target creature or planeswalker, regardless of their converted mana cost. Four copies of the Mind Carver for one, an equipment, and when it enters the battlefield, automatically attach it to target creature that we control. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus zero, and gets plus three, plus one instead, as long as our component, or <laughs> our component, our opponent controls, uh, or sorry, has more than eight uh, cards in their graveyard, right? So the deck really revolves around having eight cards in your opponent's graveyard. So we want to be using our mill effect through things like the crab and the wind robber to help, you know, get those cards from their library into the grave, getting the grave up to eight. And that's going to bring our deck online, whether it be the draw of the wind robber, the increased power and uh, toughness of the carver, or even the soaring thought thief here, a one three with flash and flying. And as is as long as your opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard, rogues you control get plus one, plus zero. Uh, so again, another effect that triggers or becomes active when our opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard. Whenever one or more rogues you control attack, each opponent mills two cards. So that actually triggers for each rogue that you have attacking, which is absolutely insane. We've got four copies of Drown in the lock at instant speed. Choose one uh, counter target spell with converted man cost less than or equal to the number of cards in his controller's graveyard. Destroy target creature uh, with converted mana cost less than or equal to the number of cards in the controller's graveyard. So, you know, you can have it be on the field and remove it, which is great. Typically, that's the downside of counters is, you know, if you don't counter it, then how are you going to remove it? But Drown in the Lock is the best of both worlds. It can counter it, you know, immediately on the stack and it can also remove creatures from play. So, you know, an absolutely insane card that only gets stronger the more cards our opponent has in their graveyard. Two copies of Wari's Disruption at instant speed for two counter target spell unless its controller pays one. This is really only good against those ramp decks when they're trying to get into their big payoff spell immediately and then they do, they don't have spare mana left over. 
obviously because they're trying to ramp into it as fast as they could and you know you do catch them on that only two copies though because it's not super uh reliable as you know most times your opponent can pay one mana and the runes comes in tapped adding a blue to our pool We've got Teferi Tutelage in the deck as an enchantment, and when it enters the battlefield, draw a card, then discard a card. Whenever you draw a card, each opponent mills two cards. So again, you know, just a form of passive mill through your opponent, much like the Rune Crab. And uh, being able to draw and discard is quite nice as well. Maybe get rid of an extra land for, you know, removal counter spell, maybe even another crab. Two copies of Didn't Say Please for three at instant speed. Counter target spell, its controller mills three cards. So, you know, a little bit more disruption or uh, some form of protection against your opponent's spells. Four copies of our Black Bloom Rogue for three with Menace. It's a 2-3, and it gets plus three, plus zero, as long as our opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard, much like the rest of the deck. And, of course, the Bog can come in tapped, adding a black to our pool. We've got three copies of Lol Mage Domination for three plus X at sorcery speed. It costs three less to cast if target creature with controller has eight or more cards in their graveyard. That's absolutely amazing. And we get to gain control of target creature with converted mana cost X or less. So, you know, you basically get X as three, for zero which is pretty cool so you know you can cast it for three and take something for three uh just because of the graveyard effect which is really really nice and uh yeah you know basically taking any creature that they control of course we've got three copies of into the story at instant speed costing three less to cast if opponent has seven or more cards in their graveyard which is basically eight and we get to draw four cards with this and you know this is absolutely insane we can combo this with fairy's tutelage which is really cool uh so not only will it mill our opponents there but it's also going to draw us more removal, more protection, more rogues, uh, you know, just more general dread and cancer to place onto our opponents. We've got four Fable Passages. This is the only rare in the deck. You can use Evolving Wild if you don't have the passage, but my first recommendation to you as a free-to-play individual is get your passages. This makes every deck that much more viable, that much more consistent. It's basically a wild card as far as land goes, and so much better than Evolving Wilds because, you know, if you play it as your fourth, it comes in untapped, which is great. It makes dual deck, dual color deck and three color decks that much more viable. Four copies of the Blackwater Dismissal. You know, of course, if you're looking to spend even more of your rares, I recommend going towards the Pathways after this. And uh, that would be your dual lands. And then five swamps, eight islands. We do have a sideboard today, but we're playing best of one. We will have a best of three sideboard deep dive for you guys in the coming days. So, you know, enjoy this deck in best of one. Get ready to incorporate a sideboard into play and take it into best of three traditional. So... Again, this deck is absolutely insane. You can either mill your opponents or you can kill your opponent, which is uh, almost too much. It should be one or the other. Stacking the Rune Crabs right away will mill your opponents. Uh, Teferi's Tutelage will also mill your opponent in a massive way with combined with Into the Story. If not, get your rogues out there, get Mind Carver on your rogues, and you are going to smash them so hard. Uh, you know, Mind Carver is a stackable effect, so to give something plus six, plus two, is absolutely insane and the thought thief is also a stackable effect for the plus one plus zero so you know we can make our rogues huge um the black bloom rogue uh, is a great example of this it's a two three it can go to a five three plus we can put carvers on it you know going to an eight four uh you know potentially an eleven five if we've got the thought thief in play as well you know taking it up to a twelve five potentially so you know that's only with two carvers and a thought and a thought thief. So you know, you can deal massive amounts of damage with this deck. You can also mill your opponent like crazy, take their big baddie with the Lull Mage domination to uh, seal the deal in style as well. Uh, it gives me flashbacks of Agent of Treachery. This is the deck we had an absolutely phenomenal win rate in Mythic, like 70, 80 uh, percent, which is really really cool. So enjoy, you guys. Again, this is my new recommendation to brand new beginner players to the game you know they don't want to spend any wild cards build this deck and you can progress to the more um you know aggressive variant that's got some of those rares it's got Luris, uh you know maybe your zaristan incorporated into it as well so let me know what you guys think in the comments below i hope you enjoyed uh the deep dive within this deck and learned a little bit about how to play uh free to play rogues as effectively and efficiently as you can again try to uh not counter things that you can remove with your removal if i could add one uh word of wisdom obviously the blood chief's thirst can remove anything uh the drown in the lock can only remove creatures so you want to try to prioritize your drown in the lock on things that aren't creatures if you have creature removal in hand uh like enchantments like artifacts stuff like this that you wouldn't normally deal with 
The same goes with your didn't say please and Walry's disruption. Um, try to counter things that you couldn't just remove. Um, if you have the removal, of course, so all this is uh, situational. So again, thanks for your time and attention. Don't forget to like the video, comment if you have any thoughts or opinions, subscribe to the channel for even more content. You can support financially by becoming a YouTube member and receive exclusive content, which is really cool. And again, enjoy the video and we'll see you soon with our wrap up thoughts. I don't think this is a good hand. We're going to toss it. It's way too late game. This looks a little bit better. And we should toss into the story for now, probably. Keep the land going slow. Free to play rogues in the house. I'm sure this will get shocked, but we'll leave it. More mountains, that's fine. Robber of the rich, we can easily deal with that. Doesn't get the draw, but it can attack. No blocks, let's take our land. Taking, um, I guess it doesn't really matter. Take a mount, or <laughs> a swamp. I had mounted 90% of the way out of my mouth. So now we can uh, counter, we can remove. Hair of the Peaks, interesting. Let's kill Robert and then we'll hold up Drought in the Log. Ending our turn. Three mana into a stomp. Stomp is being cast for two. So we can counter that, and they lose the giant. Which is great! We're gonna hold up the mana to counter. If there's no counter, then we can Thought Thief. Land off the top, who cares? One dwarf, please. Which can actually be quite threatening. Let's just counter the heck out of that relic robber. That's a good card. A little bit of a baby mill. take islands from now from now on and interesting they are at eight should we just go full aggro at this point yep this way we hit for three instead of one and we get a big old mill going on pulling phoenixes uh that's not good <laughs> So we've just given them a card to play that can block us. That's fine though. They're down to 38. We're at 48. They have 5 in hand plus a Phoenix. Oh, uh oh. We need to destroy that immediately. Our turn. Nice. That's perfect. It's a big hit for 9 plus massive mill. The rogue doing rogue things. But today, it's so much more than that. It's free to play. It's free to play, you guys. Let's kill it now before they can do anything. Right? So they could do damage on the stack if they untapped, right? Hello, good game. With a little bit of love on top. And as soon as you say this to your opponent, you get smashed. <laughs> we could sack the robber, look for a draw, but... <clears throat> or, like, look for a counter, I mean. And it, we could find one, but I doubt it. And they're just not into it. Um, 
So yeah, it's always a good sign. Free to play Mythic wins. Let's see how many we can stack up, hopefully, in a row. Our opponent goes first, but our hand looks absolutely amazing. Do you think we get a concede? I heard that people concede when the crab gets played on them. I don't know if this is true or not, but I can see it. Typically, I try to push through it, but I can see why they don't. Oh, we get a sea god. So this is an ultimatum deck. We have a counter. If not, we can Thought Thief. Which is just, like, too powerful. Yeah, too powerful. <laughs> it's true! People do just concede. Oh, no. We go first. Not a bad hand. Mana's there. We've got to one drop. A lot of protection from really anything. They basically need to remove the Wind Robber here. Nope. The Scry is nice. Is it? Is it? Is it? Grixis? What's going on, right? I want to hold up the Drown in the Lock, just in case. An Evolving Wild. It's interesting. We have removal. Playing slow for another Scry. To the top. Not ever good. <laughs> Let's see what they play. Nothing. They're both coming in tapped, so I don't think it matters much. Take the mill. I think we have to value our wind robber right now. Even if it pulls another removal spell, that's just going one for one, that's fine. And if they play a creature, that's fine because we have our own removal. Right? Like, we can just pick that off for one. So even though it might be a blocker... Oh, and no, yeah, okay. Doubling down, still, whatever. They're gonna be down to four cards in hand. I want to play this as the creature, I think. And that way we can hold up the removal here. I didn't want to leave that up in case they found protection. So let's counter so they don't draw. That's our fourth land. So we're going to lose our counter spell, but we do get our Mind Carver in play. Pulling a Black Source. They don't have Aiden Grave yet. They're at six. So a couple more interactions. We'll get there. They have a free play here, but we should be able to remove it once it enters. I doubt they have a counter for one. I mean, if we don't pull a land and it's a mystical dispute. Okay, mana spent. Get hit though. That's a decent hit. We should still just destroy it. Just in case they do have negates in hand, right? Like, it isn't kind of that deck where there's, you know, counter magic. Uh, is it tempo? So it's going to have creatures with flying, uh, spells to increase those creatures' toughness, like Rimrock Knight, um, Infuriate. Let's take our turn. Let's take our hit. There's a bounce though. Oh no, we just lose it. Um, 
Luckily, they're low on mana, and our Disruption can pick that up. Absolutely amazing. And that pushes them uh, to the grave. So not only does the Black Bloom Rogue get pushed up from itself, but also from the Mind Carver. So that's a big hit. We have Lethal in 2, down to 7. If they single drop a creature, that's not good enough either, right? They do need a double block. Double block or disruption slash removal. Phoenix of Ash is hello good game. And we've just went three in a row. Pulling a crab is like the cherry on top, right? Three wins in a row in Mythic. Uh, pretty groovy. Again, let's see how many we can get. We go first with two crabs and a passage. Oh. <laughs> oh, gosh. I don't even know what to do. We also have a Thought Thief and a Wind Robber, so it's like... It's too much in every direction. I think they'll concede when they see the passage on top of two crabs. It's a mill for 12. I'm on turn two. I've ignored rogues. I made my first free-to-play rogue deck for everybody. And uh, actually, I might have done rogues right at the beginning. Then I did a free-to-play rogue deck for everybody. And this will be the first time I've come back to it since. And, um... Wow. Like, this is better than the cycling deck, I think. People are so triggered at this point. Watch this. <laughs> oh my gosh. They get a phoenix, that's good. No attacks. And their turn. Let them have the draw. Watch us lose with two crabs too. We're getting a little ahead of ourselves. It's good, but the best thing will be a concede, right? Down to 45 already. <laughs> um, typically the Phoenix is frightening, but they've only got one forest in play. I think that's it. I... Okay, now they're just... They're really thinking about it. All right. We do need another blue source. Big ol' mill, baby. Getting those Bone Crusher Giants out of the way. Questing Beast. Amber Cleave. They love it. They can attack for one. Right, we can't block this thing. If we double block it, we should somehow get the kill on it. So there's a huge mill. Again, getting more Bone Crusher Giants, getting more Ember Cleaves. I love it. Wind Robber in play. No attacks. We hold up Drown in the lock. If we don't need to lock, we can put our Thought Thief in. They're down to 32. Wow. Ooh. Four in a row. 100% win rate in Mythic. People can't even just mentally handle it. And I get it. I feel their pain. Uh, I play against this deck. And not even the free-to-play deck like we're playing today. We play against typically the upgraded version. So, you know, it's, it's really cool that free-to-play, brand new people to the game don't have to spend any rares, any mythics. They can go and compete, climb all the way into the top ranks of the game. That's absolutely amazing. Um, we had the cycling deck, and that was, like, guaranteed certified hit mythic. This free-to-play rogues deck, now that we've upgraded it, fine-tuned it, it's spot on. You know, I think maybe even better than the cycling deck. So uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Let's keep crushing out some wins. Going first with another crab in play. Sure. This is what it feels like playing against them as well. It's like they always have the crab. 
It's ridiculous. They mulligan as well. Grab and play. Getting right into a passage on top of it. Or maybe we save the passage. Oh, nice. The, the Great Crab Wars of 2020. Alright, uh, bog and play then. Interesting. So they've got some other stuff going on here. The Relic Golem is a 6-6 six, six that can only attack if there's 8 or more cards in Grave. So, you know, another uh, kind of budget card that could go in the deck maybe. Oh, dual crabs. Nice. All right, all right, all right. Easy now, crabs. Oh, they get a passage. That sucks. Let's nuke a crab. Passage in play. Do our mills. I'm going to do it right now because we just milled three lands, so I don't want... I want them to pull a land. Um, Lull mage. We're going to need lots of blue. And now we get to attack. Straight flexing on the crab. <laughs> you know what it is. Ooh, they gain access. Target player mills four cards. Interesting. If we can draw another land into the story, it's going to become active. Uh, if they mill more instances of sorceries, it could become... Uh... Oh no, it's as cheap as it gets. Tutelage in play is really good. That's something we would have wanted to counter, because we can't remove it now. Yikes. We're down to 41. They're at 40. We go down to 39 here. Yikes. We definitely could use a tutelage. Alright. That's not a bad mill. Uh, you know, we've picked up three of their cacophonies. So that's not the worst. And we're dealing damage. We have a counter up. Another crab. Okay, that's a good a good grab. The tutelage is annoying. At least we can counter into the story, though. They grab our tutelage. Ouch. They grab a crab from us as well. They didn't kick that, and we're just milling eight. That's their whole turn, though. Let's just counter it. And that's their fourth off me, so like that's done. Second land. Oh, gross. Our turn. So not the worst. Should we just take their crab? I think I want to just take their crab. Right, one, two, three, for four. My crab! Passage! That's so aggressive! The Great Mill Wars of 2020? They're down to 23. We're at 31. They go down to 22. And our turn. If they have an into the story, we might want to sack our robber to draw a counter. Shoot. There's a 3% chance, 7, so like 10 and a half, 14% chance we could get it. We do not. <laughs> nice. That's a mill for 8, so it's unpleasant. It is unpleasant. They're down to 17, we're at 20. They bounce the crab to their own hands, nice.
That's story right now at sorcery speed. This is nice. That was a, a really good pull. No attacks. And our turn. We're at 15. Got 13 here. Oh my gosh. They're at 13 as well. Playing the crab sucks. We can destroy it. Ouch. Double crab into a land. They're gonna grab into the story. But it just goes to the top of their library. Oh my lord. They get our removal. They're gonna beat us. That's so crazy. They're taking the cacophony, which just beats us too. Okay. Well, here's the counter. So we do survive. If we had our own tutelage in, we could get a lot closer. There's nothing we can do. Into the story kills us, pretty much. Nice. We could try and grab a counter, but again, it's like 16% only. It has to be it didn't say please. I hate it. We can play these later, I guess. Dang it! Let's let them mill first. Oh, they got it! Good game. There's no way for us to get it. So we do take a loss, and uh, that is our first one. The, the mill wars, right? We had them pretty close, but that double drop on crabs plus the tutelage. Just all really adds up. All right, let's make it work, people. We go first. One rune crab, just crushing dreams. Right? Control Alt Delete. Alt F4. Just smashing their computer over. <laughs> Playing slow. Let's see what they grab. It is an island, interesting. Hit for three. Thought Thief comes in play, and we are playing against rogues again. Interesting. Nice. Hopefully these early Thought Thieves can set the pace. Opt is fine. They're looking for their third land, I guess. Thought Thief 1 in play. Land in play. Just going crazy. I think we should just go for it. Right, we don't have any counter magic, so... We're going to be tapped. They get a free turn, basically, but... We do hit for two, get a bit of a more... Uh, mail going on. A couple cards off the top. Grabbing the Passage is nice. We have a 6-3 to hit them with as well, so... You know, that kind of takes their priority. They take the turn off to play Tutelage. Which is good, we've seen that last game. Take the mill. Should we just probably push all our rogues up? If they have an extinction event, I'll be very sad, but this way we get a bigger hit in. Nice mill as well. They did have a heartless act there, I seen, so yikes. But we do have very nice field presence.
They, <laughs> they can't kill us all, though. They have to hit evens, but we have odds as well. So it's still a good game. Or should be a good game. Let's take this now as sorcery speed to pull our land. And we just pull our next as well. That's awesome. Take the mill, gain some life. They are down to 28. And we hit for 6. Down to 2. Ending our turn. We got another big draw. We're at 41. Ball thief off the top sucks. Using our rogue here sucks as well. Taking our lethal away. And then an opt taps them. Which again, it's not that bad. They're at 25. Ah, oh, we lose round in the lock. Let's hit a story up. Oh, we get a tutelage, and uh, this mind craver is absolutely lethal. And we're going to take it. We should have put it on the crab, I think. Shouldn't we have? Take the mill anyways. Getting an Ash up getting the crab. And hit him with the Smasher. 83% win rate in Mythic. Playing just a bunch of matches. It's so good. All right, you guys. Uh, you know, I'm sorry. Like, there's going to be so many people who hate this video. But you have to do the work for the beginners, right? If we can't you know, keep attracting new people to play the game, then we're in a, a losing, spiraling downward situation. So we need to always be attracting new players to the game. And I think it's an absolute treat that we have free to play decks like the Rogues, like the Cycling, that can still compete at the highest levels of gameplay and, uh, you know, contain no Mythics, no Rares, because I know when I started two years ago, it was not that case. Like. To hit Mythic, you had to have a stack of rares, about <laughs> about 30 rares in your deck, right? So uh, this is not that. It's so friendly, uh, and it's a great way to help uh, you know new players learn how to play the game effectively and efficiently because as overpowered as this deck is, you still have to learn how to play on your phases effectively, whether something's instant, whether it's sorcery, you know, prioritizing your removal uh, through creatures and non-creatures based on what you have available whether you decide to try to go aggro and kill your opponent or hold back defensively and mill them out. So there's a lot to consider and a lot of really cool things that you can learn while playing and mastering this deck. So I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, share it to a friend and join our YouTube membership program for even more exclusive content. Thank you guys for your time and attention. We'll see you in the next video.